Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for 7.3, section 7.3, polar coordinates. So in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to learn um, another, yet another, uh, form of uh, graphing, okay, essentially. Um, so we know a, a Cartesian coordinates looks like, right? That's the X and the Y. In uh, section 7.1 and 7.2, we've been playing around with parametric equations, right? Um, section 7.3 and 7.4 are yet another form of uh, coordinates uh, that we'll see sort of repeatedly as you keep studying math, and that's polar coordinates, okay? So um, for today, for this section at least, we're just gonna learn how to represent them, right? Uh, and just like we did in 7.1 and 7.2, we first learned about parametric equations, right? And then we learned how to hit it with calculus, right? So 7.3 is going to be just learning how to represent in polar coordinates, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and get started, okay? Like I said, it's another different way of, um, of representing sort of points in space, okay? Uh, polar coordinates uh, tend to be really useful for anything that has sort of like a center um, and uh, things that work maybe a little bit more radially, right, right, than uh, distance x, y, z. Um, so that's why they become important. So uh, let me just go ahead and give an intuitive sort of conversion or an idea of what polar coordinates are, right? Okay, so uh, like any point, right, I'm going to use the blue right? If I have a rando point out in space, right, then that has an x and a y associated to it, right? And that x and y is supposed to be an x and a y, right, if we start looking at this thing on an x comma y plane, right? So in order to get to my point, in order to get to this point right here, right, I have to go over an amount x, right, and up in amount y, right? And if I do so, I get to my point x, y, right? That's what we call our good old regular rectangular coordinates, okay? Now, uh, for polar coordinates, right? The way that we look at those is we imagine sort of that this point, right? Our same x, y point, we imagine that point sort of being on a circle. So that's what I'm gonna try to draw. I'm gonna try to draw a circle, at least a quarter of it, right? So pretend that is a circle, right? So then this, let me actually draw it a little thicker. There we go. Pretend that is a circle, right? And that circle has to have some radius r. There's a radius here. There's a radius attached to it, right? And since this is a circle, right? Everything, all of these distances are r. Let me move that r a little farther over so I don't confuse it with the x. So it's on a circle of radius r, right? And if we can define an angle here, let me use a thicker green, if we can define this angle theta, right? Then we can say, right, uh, that we can go out a specific length r to land on my circle, right? And then I can subtend an angle theta in order to get to my point, in order to get to this same point right here, right? So and if that's the case, right, the way that I can go ahead and um, represent this point can be some radius and some angle theta. Let me do the theta correctly, there we go, right? So I can basically say I can go out a distance and then up a specific angle, right? And that will get me to, the, to my same point x, y. Okay, so that's in a nutshell how polar coordinates work. We, in, instead of defining an x uh, distance to go horizontally and the y distance to go uh, vertically, right? Uh, we use a radial distance out and then an angle of inclination, okay? That in itself is polar coordinates, okay? So now, now that we know sort of how it works, let me go ahead and define the conversions for them. So usually, right, these top two, right, is if you want to go um, 
from polar, right, to Cartesian or rectangular. It's a two separate names for the same thing. Let me just use R for rectangular for the X and Y, right? And then the other two, these two, right? These tend to get used for the other direction. If you wanna go from rectangular over to polar, okay? All right, so let me show you guys how this works. I'm gonna perform one of each, okay? Uh, let's say, first of all, like let's say, you know, for the first square, you wanna turn one, two, and that is in Cartesian, right? That is in rectangular coordinates. I wanna change it into polar coordinates, right? So I'm gonna use those blue ones, right? So that means uh, one squared plus two squared should be equal to uh, one plus four is equal to five, which equals to R squared according to my blue one, right? So then therefore R is the square root of five. That simple, okay? The next one, right? So this gives me my R, now I need a theta. So that's where I need tangent theta is Y over X. So I have my Y and I have my X, right? So tangent of my angle theta has to be the Y two over one over X, right? There we go. So then that means my theta has to equal the tan inverse and this is natural, this is okay, of two. So my coordinate for this, right, is going to be root five comma uh, tan inverse of two. Now, you can go ahead and put tan inverse of two into a calculator, it won't give you an error, and then you can give me a, uh, actually, let me go ahead and do it, huh? You put it in over here, so tan inverse, of two, it'll give me a value, right? So this is 1.107, and let me go ahead and there we go, it's already there. This is 1.107 radians, and if I want it in degrees, that's about 63.43 degrees, that's it, okay? So it's completely natural to have these now. Okay, so now let me go ahead and grab this and turn it into uh, Cartesian coordinate. So basically, instead of having an R and a theta, that's what we have here, right? This is an R and this is a theta. I want to turn it back into X and Y. Okay, so that means I'm going to need those yellow ones, the yellow conversion. So X is equal to R5, right? Cosine of negative uh, 3 pi over 4, right? 5. five. Uh, cosine of negative three pi over four, that is negative root two over two. So this is negative five root two over two. We are done with at least the X coordinate. Okay. My Y coordinate works out the same way. So Y is five sine negative three pi over four. Five, uh, negative three pi over four is also sine of negative three pi over four is also negative root two over two. So we have negative uh, five root two over two. That is my second uh, part. That's my Y value. So my coordinate for this, right, is going to be <clears throat> uh, negative five, uh, whoops, me. Let me, let me write it right. Negative five root two over two comma negative five root two over two. Uh, close that off. There we are. So hopefully you guys see how simple it is. To convert from one version to the other, okay? So. Now that we know how to convert between the two, right? Now let's go into uh, polar curves. So just how in uh, our Cartesian or rectangular coordinates, right? Uh, we're able to produce uh, a list of X and Y's that if you connect the dots, right? Gets us a nice curve, a nice looking curve, right? Okay, so um, kind of like a, basically when we had this, right? A Y equals F of X that if we gave this thing, if we gave this function uh, a bunch of x's, 
Uh, it'll spit out a bunch of Y's, right? And then we associate the Y's and the X's and those were points that we put on some graph paper, right? Okay. Same thing happens here. The only difference now though, is we are uh, specifying points based on a radius and an angle. Now we have functions that look like this. This is sort of the relationship that we're gonna be playing around with here. It's gonna be an R sub uh, R of theta, right? Where the distance away from the origin is defined by whatever angle we give it. Okay, let me show you guys what this is, what I, what I mean by that. So now, um, when we graph polar coordinates, we tend to graph it on stuff that looks like this. This is sort of like a polar axis. That's what it's called, a polar axis. Okay, and notice how it doesn't have x's and y's, so you don't have the, you know, the horizontal and verticals, right? Right, but you can sort of overlay this on an x, y, and it still works out, okay? Now, the way that we graph these, right, like I said, are based off of a radius and some angle, right? And that's exactly what's gonna happen here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this right here. So I have a function here, uh, this is a polar, curve, right? And I just, I'm just going to graph it, show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. So when theta is zero, right? So then R of zero is going to be two cosine of zero, 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 not theta, zero, right? Cosine of zero is one. So it's going to be two times one is two. So my R theta right, is gonna be this, two comma zero for my angle, okay? Let's do pi over four. So R of pi over four, two cosine of pi over four. And that's gonna be two times the square root of two over two, and that is root two. So here, my, my coordinate is going to be uh, root 2 comma pi over 4, OK? Next one, r of pi over 2. That's 2 cosine of pi over 2. So 2 cosine of pi over 2, if you guys remember that, that is 0. So it's going to be zero. So here it's going to be zero comma pi over two. Okay, let me finish up the calculations for the rest of these. Hopefully you guys got the idea here. R of three pi over four, two cosine of three pi over four. So now at three pi over four, this is going to be negative, right? So this is gonna be two times negative root two over two. And this is negative root two. Uh, negative root two comma three pi over four. Okay, and then pi, right? R of pi two cosine of pi is gonna be two, whoops, cosine of pi is negative one. This is gonna be negative two. So this is gonna be negative two comma pi. And just for kicks and giggles, let's go ahead and do two pi just to set it in since we just did it for now, right? So two cosine of two pi, right? Uh, cosine of two pi, right, is one. This is gonna be two times one is two. So two comma two pi. There we are. Okay, so now let me go ahead and start graphing some of these points to show you guys how this actually works. Okay, how to actually graph these, okay? And the idea, right, is that you're gonna first start with the theta first. You're gonna to go to that angle, right? and then go a radius out, okay? And uh, there's a reason why we do it that way, okay? And I'm gonna explain to you guys why that is. So let me first start with this one, the first one, right? 
uh, two comma zero. So at zero degrees, at zero degrees, right? I'm going to go out to two and I'm going to do this one, two. This is going to be, I'm still going to be able to, this, this goes for you guys as well. One, one, two, three, two. So if you remember when you were doing stuff with um, uh, rectangular coordinates, you were able to you know, make however many tick marks equal to one, right? So uh, if you were graphing this on a piece of paper, right, you'd be able to say, oh, every three tick marks was gonna be one, another three was gonna be two, right? Or you were able to do five. So one, two, three, four, five tick marks was one, one, two, three, four, five more tick marks was two, right? Same thing with uh, polar coordinates. I can go ahead and set my radii however I want here. So I'm gonna set one, two, three circles to be one, one, two, three circles to be two, okay? So now let's graph this. Theta is zero. So my, I'm looking at this angle first, this angle right here, whoosh, this one right here, right? At that angle, my distance away from the radius should be two. So my point for this one should be right here. All right, we're getting started. Next one is gonna be pi over four. So I'm gonna look for pi over four, here it is, right here, right? And for that ray, for that angle, right? Uh, my distance out should be root two. Okay, and uh, square root of two is 1.7 something, I believe, right? Let me double check it. Ugh, don't you hate these hard numbers? Uh, square root of two. Oh, I'm wrong, 1.414, what do you know? So 1.414, I'm gonna go out one point. So the first one is gonna be 1.333. The next one out should be 1.666, right? So it should be somewhere in the middle. So it's gonna be about right there. Okay, so we did these two, that one and that one. The next point, right? Uh, pi over two comma zero. So I'm gonna be looking at this ray, the one that goes straight up and down here, right? And I want to go zero out. So that means my point remains at the origin. And that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. I went to that ray uh, of pi over two out, right? And I had to go no distance out. That's fine. That is perfectly fine. Okay, so now these two are the ones that usually confuse people. Because of the definition of how I explained uh, polar coordinates, right? That it's based off of an angle and a radius outward, okay? Then what people think is, well, that means all my radius, this is, all my radii are supposed to be positive. And unfortunately it's not the case you have some radiuses that are negative, okay? So now, how do you handle these? Well, the way that you do it, I'm still gonna be looking at this angle. I'm still gonna be looking at uh, three pi over four. So I'm gonna be looking at this ray right here, this one right here, okay? But instead of going in that direction outward, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction by that much. So instead of going root two in this direction, I'm gonna be going root two in the opposite direction in sort of like the, uh, in the, in the uh, what's it called? The complementary, no, supplementary angle outward. Does that make sense? So that means instead of going out that way, I'm gonna go out this way along seven pi over four. And in that case, I'm gonna go out the positive amount of the root two, right? So and that means I'm gonna go out one, two, maybe about right here. That looks about halfway. Okay. And then same thing happens with my angle at pi. So I'm gonna be going out this, Oops, let me draw that a little nicer, huh? I wanna go out this way, right? Because that's my angle, right? But my radius, my R is given to me as negative. So that means I have to go out the other way. And hopefully you guys see this right. 
I'm landing right back where I started. Okay. Now, uh, and then if you took, take, let, let's go ahead and do the very last one, this one. Okay. Uh, two comma two pi. Okay. That one ends up being right here. So that's back positive angles, positive radii. That's way out here. Okay. Now, if you go ahead and graph this appropriately, if you fill in all the rest of the angles, basically, you're going to get something that looks like this. And this is indeed, hopefully you guys see what I'm trying to do here. This is a circle centered at one, centered at this one right here, of radius one. Okay, so uh, I'll show you guys what I mean uh, when when we get to the graphing portion. There's going to be a section where I'm going to be graphing stuff for you guys on Desmos. I'm going to give you guys the resources to do so. Okay, so now, now that we know how to graph these, right, uh, let me go down and uh, show you guys what I, uh, what you already saw. So if you guys recall, this one is just now the example that I just graphed. So let me go back up so I can confirm with you guys. You guys see that? That it's two cosine of theta, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to convert this back into Cartesian coordinates. So I'm gonna go ahead and con convert it back to my regular good old x, y, plain stuff, okay? Uh, the stuff that we know and love, okay? So the question is, how the heck do we do that? Okay, and that's where we use these conversions, the ones that were up here, okay? Same idea, I'm gonna probably be using my uh, X's and Y's and R squares and tan thetas everywhere to hopefully get this back into X, Y. Okay, so I wanna show you guys how this works out, at least for the circle, it should be simple and it is. So let me go ahead and get started with this one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and do R is equal to two cosine of theta. Okay, I basically just got rid of the functional notation of it. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by R. So it's gonna be times R, times r. So then that gets me r squared is equal to 2 r cosine of theta. Okay, now here's where the fun stuff happens. r squared, we know is supposed to be x squared plus y squared. That's part of our conversion, right? So that's where we get x squared plus y squared. Okay, so we just converted uh, the left-hand side, right? And then over here, we see two R cosine theta. R cosine theta is X. So this is gonna be two X. And we're just about done. So we have this going on now, right? So I'm gonna move the two X over, X squared minus two X plus Y squared is equal to zero. So if you grab this, if you grab this expression that's right here, let me put the Y in right, there we go. If you grab this expression right here and graph it, you will get the circle that we just graphed right here. Okay. Now, if you guys know how to, um, complete the square, depending on uh, who taught you your pre-calc, you, you may or may not remember how to complete the square, right? Uh, if you do complete the square with the X, right, you're gonna end up getting something that looks, uh, let me, yep, looks like this. Uh, X uh, minus one squared plus Y squared is equal to one. This is an equivalent statement for this right here, right? And if you guys recall, this is the equation of a circle, right? With the center at one comma zero, right? And the radius is the square root of one, which is one, 
Okay, so now notice how, what I want you guys to notice is this, that two cosine of theta, right, is a much more elegantly sort of composed uh, function, right? But it's done under polar coordinates, right? As opposed to what this would give us, right? In this case, we have, we're gonna have to take square roots if we wanted y by itself, right? We have to take square roots and the square root produces a positive and negative. So you end up getting two functions, right? Where the combination of them aren't functions. Right, as opposed to here where they are. Okay, so that's how simple this is. Okay, now, uh, as you guys can see, this first example that I did, right, uh, the, the equation for the circle, right, centered at one of radius one is very elegant, it's very short, there's not much to it, right? It's much better than working with it. Uh, in terms of x, y, okay? That doesn't always happen. Sometimes, right, things look much nicer in uh, polar coordinates than they do in Cartesian and vice versa. Sometimes things look much better in Cartesian coordinates than they do in polar. So it's up to you to figure out which one is best depending on the scenario that you get, okay? So to show you what I mean, I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna convert x squared plus one to polar coordinate. So if you know what this thing looks like, it's a parabola shifted up by one, okay? It's your vanilla x squared and you just move it up by one. That's it. That is it, right? So now I'm gonna show you guys how nasty the polar version of this equation looks like, right? And then I'll show you guys how to graph it on our tool. Okay, so. Uh, for these, since I'm going from rectangular to polar, right, I'm going to use my uh, x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta to be able to do some stuff with it, okay? Okay, so here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change it to y is equal to x squared plus 1, okay? Okay. Here's where I'm using my conversions, okay? So y is r cosine of theta, right? And my x is r, sorry, y is r sine theta, sine theta, sine theta. And then my x is r, r cosine, right? So r cosine theta. And this is squared plus one, okay? We're getting somewhere. So at this point, right, uh, the, the idea here is that we want this, r of theta is equal to just stuff. We don't care what this stuff is, but we just want stuff, right? And this stuff over here has to have a theta in it, right? So that's what we're trying to do here. We're gonna try to get all of this stuff and get r equal, okay? So this is gonna tax your algebra skills a lot, okay? Um, if you need to, you know, go back, rewind it, double check your notes, double check your pre-calc notes, you're gonna need those, okay? So here we go. So I'm gonna leave the r sine theta as it is. I'm gonna distribute the, I'm gonna do the square, right? So it's gonna be r squared cosine squared theta plus one. I'm gonna grab my r squared cosine theta, move it on the other side. So I'm gonna have minus r squared cosine theta, right? Plus r sine theta is equal to one. Okay. Uh, from both sides, I'm gonna do a divided by cosine theta and I forgot a square right here. I'm gonna divide by cosine theta squared. Divide by cosine squared theta on everything, right? So, and it's gonna be a negative cosine theta, cosine squared theta, so negative, negative, okay? 
But if I do that, okay, follow along, r squared minus r sine theta over cosine squared of theta is equal to one over negative cosine squared theta. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and fill something in here and I'm gonna tell you guys the mechanism for how I do it, okay? This is equivalent to r squared minus r sine theta over cosine squared theta, right? Plus sine theta divided by cosine squared theta quantity squared is equal to one over minus cosine theta, that's gotta be squared, plus sine theta over cosine squared theta quantity squared. So what I did here, right, and I'm gonna highlight it uh, and I'm gonna write it down is I completed the square, okay? Um, depending on who you had for pre-calc, maybe covered it, maybe didn't, okay? If you didn't, uh, it's a quick thing you can pick up. It's not that bad, okay? It looks scary, it's really not. Um, and that's where this term is coming in. So I'm adding the same term on both sides, okay? And that's what the complete the square is, okay? Well, not entirely. The reason why we have to do the complete the square is sort of like a means to an end. And this is the, this is the end. You get R minus sine theta over two cosine, oh, and I forgot something. A two there and a two there, uh, two. Cosine squared, there we go. Whew. Okay, cosine squared theta, that's my bad. Okay, is equal to one over minus cosine squared theta plus sine of theta over two cosine squared theta, all this squared. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense, right? Uh, for what's happening at the moment, right? That all of this, I'm gonna highlight it all, all of the stuff on the left-hand side of the equal sign became this, and it is now equal to all the stuff on the right-hand side, all of this. Okay, and that's the point behind complete the square. We end up reducing that left-hand side into something a little nicer to work with. In particular, right now we have our by itself, we don't have R squares and R cubes or just single R's separated by R squares, none of that anymore. We just have one single R now, right? Okay, now let me get rid of the highlights, okay? Um, so now that we have this, now, now I'm gonna be playing around with this thing, right? This is just that thing squared, right? To get rid of a square, I square root it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the square root of all of this, which means it's the square root of all of this, okay? So I get left with R minus sine of theta over two cosine squared of theta is equal to the square root of all that jazz right there, one over negative cosine squared theta plus sine of theta all over 
two cosine squared of theta. And that's supposed to be squared. And then the last thing I get to do is this thing. This is a minus stuff. So I just throw it on the other side, right? So then now I'm going to go ahead and uh, finalize this. I'm going to do R of theta is equal to. Go back and watch the video if you got lost somewhere, if you fell off the train, if you fell overboard, go back and watch it. Minus cosine squared of theta plus sine of theta over two cosine squared of theta quantity squared, right? Plus sine theta over two cosine squared theta. Let me double check. Yep. Okay. Ooh. There we are. So if you ever, ever, ever needed to graph f of x equals x squared plus 1 in polar coordinates, this is what it would look like. Good Lord, why would we do such things, right? So just like I explained before, right, let's go back up to the, right, this version of the equation of a line, right, is relatively, I mean, it looks tame for us, right? Uh, but if you sort of, you know, tried to break it up into its x and y's or in, in, into its, x, uh, sorry, into its f of x, right, you're going to end up having two functions. Um, and that's cool and all, right? But this figure, a simple circle, right, is being defined by two separate functions. Maybe not the best thing in the world, right? As opposed to the polar uh, representation of the circle, right? And it's just two cosine theta. That's it. No more, no less. Right? So same thing, right? We just converted this into polar, and it's this entirely magnificent, horrendous thing that we just computed, right? Not the nicest thing in the world, right? So and in this case, right, I think it'd be best for us to do polar coordinates, or sorry, uh, rectangular coordinates, right? Our normal x, y, right? But the sort of the app opposite is also valid that sometimes you might get stuff that uh, in polar looks very nice, very, very short and sweet, right? And if you tried to convert it back into, um, into rectangular coordinates, it's just atrocious. It's nasty, absolutely horrible, okay? So, uh, what I want to do now, let me actually move on because I want you guys to do the quick checks. Okay, so try these out the same way. Um, convert polar to coordinate, uh, polar to Cartesian and then Cartesian to polar. See how you do. It's not too bad, okay? Um, so what I want to do now uh, is sort of go through this. So if you guys have your phone sort of at the ready, I know some of you guys are looking at this on a computer screen. So if you have a phone sort of next to you, right? I've got another QR code there and it's for a uh, polar grapher and uh, some calculus that we're about to do. This is gonna be for section 7.4. So we, for now, can ignore the... Uh, we can ignore, I'm going to go ahead and open it up here, polar function plotter and integral calculator. So if you open it up, you get this thing, okay? This is going to be uh, the polar grapher that we're going to be using for section uh, 7.3 and 7.4. For now, you don't have to worry about these uh, A and L. They're actually going to be something that's going to happen in, uh, in section 7.4. Uh, but for now, we can just use this as a grapher, okay? 
So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and do a double screen. One right there, one right there. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. I'm going to scroll up to our examples, OK? And if we go ahead and graph these, they, they graph just how you think they do, OK? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do R of theta as 2 cosine. And parentheses are your friend here. So make sure you do parentheses everywhere you can, OK? Uh, here we are. So here's the first one. OK, so if we graph this, right, let me go ahead and move over here. There we go. There's our graph. OK, the grapher obviously does it a lot smoother than I do. I'm sorry. OK, so now if you take a look, right, uh, let me zoom out a little more. We said that for, for the second example that I did, we converted it into the, uh, a circle, right? And if you go up here into the wrench uh, at the very top right for Desmos, right? You can turn this back into the grid and you can see that it's exactly how it's supposed to be, okay? There we are. Okay, so now here's the fun stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and try to graph this polar coordinate, this polar form that's supposed to be x squared plus one. So I'm going to go ahead and do square root, right? One divided by negative cosine squared of theta. Make sure you use a lot of parentheses. Sometimes Desmos doesn't like it when you don't use parentheses. Uh, sine of theta divided by two cosine squared of theta. We're getting there. And then this has got to be squared. And I need to now go outside of the square root. Come on. There we go. Plus sine of theta divided by two cosine, and I forgot to square theta. Woo. So now let me actually make this front and center so you guys can see what I just did. There you go. You guys notice that that looks like a parabola, right? Okay, now. What I do want to show you guys is this, my A, my B, right? Uh, usually you don't want to go anywhere farther than two pi because it just repeats after that, right? So if you take a look, right, I can drag this back and it actually you know, draws it in for me, right? Hopefully you guys see that, right? But look at this. So this is supposed to be the parabola, right? Let me switch it back to grid. There you are. This is the bona fide parabola that we know from pre-calc, right? The, you know, the U-shaped and then moved it up by one. That's it, right? So it's the same thing in both, right? With the exception is that it looks entirely horrible if you do it in polar, okay? Like I said, right? The opposite is also true. Sometimes you can get stuff that is absolutely wretched in, in uh, rectangular or your x, y coordinates, right? But look absolutely elegant in polar coordinates, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, the point behind polar uh, coordinates, for, uh, parametric uh, equations and your regular rectangular coordinates is you choose it depending on whatever you're looking at, okay? If you need more like a horizontal and vertical, you go X, Y, right? If you need something that has a center that sort of spins around, right? Then that means you're gonna be doing polar, right? If you have something that requires you to track something with respect to a time, you're gonna be using parametric, okay? It depends on which one you wanna look at. That's it, that is it, okay? So try these quick checks out. Uh, go ahead, play around with uh, the grapher. That's here, okay? Uh, 
Unfortunately, the grapher that I'm providing you is not perfect by any means. Uh, and in some cases, in many cases, right? You'll have to modify your equation to make it work on Desmos. You're gonna to have to modify your polar equation to make it work on Desmos correctly, right? But it's better than not having anything, okay? Um, the integrals that you saw there um, are, um, the integrals that you saw there are, uh, we're gonna be using them in section 7.4, okay? We're gonna hit it with calculus, okay? So stay tuned. Okay, so for now, for this section, you can go ahead and ignore those for now, okay? Now, the only other thing I wanna give you guys uh, in terms of reference or, um, or resources for uh, this section is a really big, really massive piece of paper with just one polar sort of coordinate sheet, that's it, okay? So if you need to print out a polar graph or a polar axis, right? Go ahead, grab this, print it out a couple times, okay? Or copy paste it into your favorite Word document and graph from there, okay? Um, this is just to provide you with a little bit more uh, that you maybe didn't have before, that's it, okay? Uh, I think besides that, I am done. Uh, these are the lecture questions, okay? It's only two of them. Since this section is pretty short, all we're doing is, oops, Look at me go. All we're doing is graphing polar coordinates. Nothing big, nothing confusing. Okay. Um, try these out and then verify your answer using Desmos. Okay. Your answers are supposed to be, right, pretty nice. Okay. And like I said, no matter what, uh, verify your answer using Desmos. You should be able to grab these uh, using Desmos, using the tool that I just showed you. Okay. Okay. Besides that, I think I am done. Happy studying.